For gorgeous patterns, unpredictable blends, and beautiful watercolor looks, it doesn't get any more fun than ink smushing with stencils and watercolors. <laughs> Every technique video is narrated live while I'm doing the technique, so you're getting a real-time view of how the whole process works. Pull out the supplies I'm using and create right along with me, pausing as you need. Before we get started, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it. Watercolor ink smushing with stencils is by far one of my favorite techniques. It really creates amazing looks no matter what kind of stencils you have. So for our samples here, I have two different kinds of stencils, one that has more open space and smaller stencil lines, and one that has bigger spaces for the ink to grab onto. So we're going to do two different samples, and we're going to start with the smaller one here. I find that the best inks to use with this technique is uh, liquid watercolors. Uh, so the brushes work really, really well for this technique, or you can use liquid watercolors with a brush or pan sets. If you're going to use pencils, you have to activate them first, and sometimes that can not result in what you want it to. So I'm just taking my watercolor brushes here, and I'm going to go down in kind of a ombre order. So I started off with a rubellite color, so a pinkish shade, and then I'm going to go into this orange autumn blaze and kind of overlap a little bit and then go down into this warm sunshine yellowy color. And right now it doesn't look like much because it looks like you really don't have a lot on the stencil. But let me tell you, there is a lot of color on the stencil right now. So you can see those little dots of color in there. And as soon as I spray it with the water, you're going to see that start to activate. So we're going to activate this up and the color is starting to spread around a little bit. The more water you add, the looser and lighter of a look you're going to get. So it just kind of depends on what it is that you're looking for to get the results that you want. So once I've got that down, I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. And again, the surface tension of water is going to help keep everything in place until I get it down onto my watercolor cardstock. So now I can just press. If you're going to do it this way, it's best to just take a paper towel and press down. So that way you're not getting your fingers all over the place. You can also just take a cloth and go down like so and just hope that you don't get any color in your spaces here if you want to make sure that this stays perfectly clean. And then you let this sit as long as you want. And when you are ready, go ahead and lift it up and see the beautiful result that you get. So there we go. We've got gorgeous gradation of color from one to the next to the next and a beautiful watercolor look. This is going to go ahead and dry and we'll take a look at it again when it's done. For our next sample here, I'm going to use a stencil that has more actual stencil acetate in it. And this is going to obviously give us more color. So I'm going to do the same uh, color palette here. So you can really tell the difference between the two. And as you can see, you can really see the color on here very, very quickly. So again, I'm starting with that reddish pink color and we'll move into the orange and then down into the yellow. And again, we're going to go ahead and spray this. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it on my paper. Now, if you leave this here until it completely dries, you're going to get a really gorgeous finished saturated look. If I pick it up now, it's going to pull away and we're going to get some globs and things. It's going to look really, really nice. But I can go ahead and put a block on top of this to help add pressure and make sure that the color spreads evenly. And then just go ahead and let this sit here until it dries. All right, so I've let this sit here for quite a few hours. Um, because everything is just compressed on top of each other and there's no airflow, it does take a little longer for this to dry. I'm going to go ahead and I'll lift this up. And my stencil is dry. And here is my beautiful result. 
You can see I've got some really great water spots going on. This is just a fabulous, fabulous piece. So here we go. Short or long, thin or thick, you're going to get a really great result if you try to do some ink smushing with your stencils. I hope you enjoy this technique and you add it into your toolbox sometime soon. When you give it a try, share it out on Instagram and tag me at Nicole Watt Creates. I always love to see what your creative mind is thinking. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me today. And until next time, happy crafting.